Hello everyone, welcome to Kevin Forum. I'm Yong Jixie, a software engineer from Python. Today, I will give you a talk called Video VDPA Device in User Space. Here is my agenda for this talk. I will start with some background information on VDPA and video. Then, I will give you some details on video design and implementation. At last, I will show the status of this work and our future plan. OK, firstly, let me give you some background information. Here is a high-level overview of the VDPA kernel framework, which has been merged into kernel during last year. VDPA is short for virtual data path acceleration. And uh, it represents a kind of UI whose data path complies with the watch house specification, but for the control path is vendor specific. To hide the complexity of the VDPA devices and uh, provide a unified interface for both the kernel and the user space driver, VDPA kernel framework is introduced. It makes use of a software VDPA bus to abstract the common attributes and operations of VDPA devices. Then, a VDPA device driver can create and register a VDPA device abstraction to the VDPA bus. And the VDPA bus, bus driver can use the unified con configuration operations to control those different types of the VDPA devices. Now, two types of VDPA bus driver are supported, including virtual VDPA bus driver and the rehearsal VDPA bus driver. For virtual VDPA bus driver, the VDPA framework will present a virtual device. This allows the kernel virtual driver to control the VDPA device as if they are standard virtual devices. Then, Various kernel subsystems could be connected to the virtual device for user space application to consume. For rehearsal VDPA bus driver, VDPA framework will present a rehearsal char device. This allows the user space rehearsal driver to control VDPA device as if they are standard rehearsal devices. Various user space application could be connected to rehearsal devices in this way. Uh, a typical use case is to connect a VDPA device to QMU and use it as a rehearsal backend uh, for the virtual drivers running inside the VM. Then, what is VDUSE? VDUSE is a framework to implement user space VDPA devices. It allows a user space daemon to emulate a VDPA device, which can be attached to a VDPA subsystem. Through Reduce, we can develop a unified user space approach for both VM and container workloads. For example, we can make use of Reduce to emulate a VDPA block device connecting to a distributed storage such as SAFE. Then, both Kata containers and the RONC containers in a Kubernetes-based cloud platform can access can use this emulated VDPA block device to access the uh, distributed storage. Uh, of course, we can also emulate a VDPA device in kernel space, but the user space the VDPA device could be more attractive. Firstly, the user space development and life cycle is much faster, and uh, compared with kernel solution, user space solution is easier to maintain. For example, it's easier to do live upgrade for a user space daemon than a kernel module. What's more, user space, daemon, user space development is more flexible. It has less limitation and it can make use of a lot of user space library. Even it can use some device emulation code in QMU and Rasta VMS. Okay. Next, I will introduce the video design and the implementation. This is an overview of video architecture, including a video user space daemon and a video kernel driver. As we can see, 
We do the Java on the one hand, act as a VDPA device Java um, that will create a VDPA device abstraction and attach it to the VDPA bus. Then container can access the VD software VDPA device via the virtual VDPA bus driver. And the VM can access it to via the host of VDPA bus driver. On the other hand, video driver exports a child device interface to communicate with user space daemon. User space daemon will use it to implement device simulation and the virtual data plan. The device simulation will be used in VDPA device control path, and the virtual data plan is used in the data path. This slide shows the implementation of video device control path. The control path is mostly handed in the kernel. That means the user will not go through the video daemon, uh, but written by video driver directly when the what we host the video when the VTPA bus driver try to access the device attributes of VTPA devices. Those device attributes that are the configuration space will be firstly initialized by video the daemon where they are controlled on the child device interface. And the, the video the daemon can also query and update those device attributes where they are controlled. The reason why we don't hand it in user space is that it is not so easy to prevent DDoS attack from an untrusted user space daemon on the on some uncontrolled path. And so we try to reduce the attack surface as much as possible. However, since the data path is handed in user space daemon, there are also some data path related control message such as stating device data that needed to be processed by video daemon directly. So a uh, message negligence is introduced to forward those control methods, methods to user space. Uh, user space daemon can use read and write his call on the child device interface to receive and reply them. And in the data path, the call is how to access the data or daemon buffer in our user space daemon, which can be implemented in different ways depending on the type of VDPA bus driver. In virtual VDPA case, we make use of MMU-based software LTLB with function buffer mechanism to achieve that. That means the data in the DMA buffer or virtual driver will be copied into a bouncing buffer or reduce driver and back, depending on the direction of the DMA transfer. The user daemon only need to use the mmap use this call to map the bouncing buffer into its own address safe space to access the DMA data. This is used to prevent user space uh, accessing the original DMA buffer directly, uh, which may contain some other candidates. Um, but in coherent DMA buffing, uh, DMA mapping, um, the DMA buffer is allocated by video driver directly. So um, it, be, it can be safely mapped into, mapped into video DMA directly. And that is the case for the water queue allocation. And then you host a VDPA bus driver, a bus, VDPA bus driver, the DMA buffer is resided in user space memory region, which can be shared to the video the daemon mm, while transferring the fat helper of the shared memory. This works like what we did for vhost user. What's more, to implement a data path, video the daemon also need to need some ways to uh, receive the water queue kick. And this can be done while even have the mechanism. And we also need to inject inject interrupt to the driver sometimes. Mm, this is achieved by the air control now. Next me, and let me give you some details on how to implement a video daemon. At first, we need to create a video device. 
This can be done while the video to create a DVL control on the control device interface. With this uh, L control, user space can specify some basic configuration such as device name, virtual future, the number of virtual queues, virtual configuration space, and so on for this emulated uh, device. The device name is used to identify a video device uniquely. After the L control, a child device interface will be exported to user space for device emulation. Then we need to use the video VQ setup IO control on the child device interface to add per watch queue configuration to the device. Now we only support one watch queue attribute, that is the max queue size. After the initialization, we can begin processing video control message from the child device interface. The first message will arrive while attaching the video device to VDP bus via a listening message. The listening message could be sent via the VDP management tool in IP root 2 package. And now, there are three types of messages introduced by video framework, namely video get VQ state, video update IOTLB, and the video set status. The video get VQ state message is only used by the host VDP case to fetch the state of watch queue. The state of watch queue is different depending on the watch queue type. For example, for split watch queue is the last index of the available ring. And the video update LTLB message is used to notify user space to update the memory mapping for for specified IOV range. range. At, after receiving this message, user space should firstly remove the old mapping for the specified IOV range, then set up the new mapping via IO control. The IO control will be used to map IOV region to user space. We will introduce the IO control later. The last type of message is video set status which is used to set the device status. User space should follow the watch out space to process this message. For example, um, when the messenger asks user space to set the future's OK feature be uh, that device that uh, bit, the user space should fail the message if they cannot accept the negotiated feature. Uh, after driver OK start bit is saved by the message, user space should start the data plan process. To start the data plan processing, um, we first need to use the video VQ get info air control to get some information of what queues, including the watch queue size, the LVS or descript table, available ring and user ring, the watch queue state, and the ready starter. If the ready status shows the watch queue is ready for processing, we can pass the above LVS to the video the IOTLB get FDL control to map the LVA region into the space. This IO control will find the first LVA region that overlaps with the specified LVA range and return the corresponding file descriptor. The file descriptor can be passed to MMAP, this call to map the LVA region into user space. Besides the IOVA mapping, we can optionally set up the kick intermittent FD for the specified virtual queue with the VDU, the VQ setup kick FD IO control. The kick intermittent FD will be used by VDU the kernel module to modify user space to consume the available ring. Uh, of course, and the user space can choose to pull the available ring without the notification state. And uh, during consuming the available ring, the buffer described by the descriptor should be also mapped into user space while the reduced LTLB get FDL control before accessing. 
at the end, once we complete a request and fill the user ring, we can inject an interrupt for specific input queue while the video the VQ inject air queue air control. Then with those steps mentioned above, I think um, we can easily to we can we can easily emulate a VDPA device in user space. At last, um, let me show the status of this work and uh, our future plan. This work started uh, with October last year. Now, the version 11 of the patch set has been posted to upstream. Here, I really thank Jason, Stefan, Michael, and other guys for their review and the valuable suggestion. Uh, a supported uh, color tree and the uh, space demon example uh, is all, are also open sourced in the GitHub. And someone who is interested in interested in this work um, can use it to do some test and further development. And for the future, there are lots of work in our mind. Firstly, open source a user space library is needed. This can make use video user space development more standardized and faster. Secondly, support for more device types is also appreciated in the future since the current version only support block device type. Uh, lastly, improving performance is also important. For example, supporting interrupt bending and uh, find some way to get rid of the bouncing buffer to enable zero copy and so on. Okay, that's all for today's talk. If you are interested in this work, Welcome to join us. Thank you.